we rejoin the action just 20 something seconds into this light featherweight match a quarter final between on top in the blue gi Yago George representing Cicero Costa on bottom is Hutaifa Penny of Carlson Gracie team in I believe Norway the frontline academy Again, we're getting competitors from all around the world here. Oh, Yago George possibly going to the side. That was a nice use of the, the high back step there and almost managed to get a guard pass and catch an arm in the process, but a nice recovery from Penny in that transition and she looking to wrap a leg up, but Yago George is maybe a little underrated among the kind of the uh, the, the, sort of the the general jujitsu community, which is a shame considering how good a competitor he is. This guy is so consistent, so durable, so tough. Just because he doesn't have flashy jujitsu or a loud personality, he often gets overlooked. But in terms of light featherweight black belt competitors, it's hard to find somebody better. And as I said, more consistent than Yago George. Yeah, I, I really love the passing position that he's uh, sticking with right here. One thing I'm really noticing is that his elbow, at least when he was holding the collar, never deviated from his his thigh. It was always on top of his quad, and that trapped the leg of Penny. And now you can see him just slowly, like you said, how he's very experienced. You can really tell. You could tell that just by watching his jiu-jitsu even. He's, he's very slow. He knows exactly where he needs to go, passing to the side. Nice Beautiful pass work. there. I think he's going to get the three right there. Yes, he does. Three points just as Penny manages to trap an ankle into a very, very low half guard. But that cross face with the grip of the gi securing him to the upper body. Yago George, even though he competes in the light featherweight division, you can see the pressure that he's putting on his opponent right here. It looks considerable. He, he does a very good job as well. Of There's a principle in passing where if you can keep your head close to your partner, then you're going to be able to smother them very effectively. And he has not moved. In fact, has only gotten tighter with his head next to the head of Penny, slowly making that head control grip tighter and tighter. That's a lot of pressure to deal with. It's very hard to defend your guard while simultaneously dealing with pressure. This is, of course, a quarterfinal match, and the winner will go on to take on the winner of the next match immediately after this one, Lucas Pinheiro versus Malachi Edmonds. So there's some, some, serious, there's some serious talent here in this light featherweight division, and I feel that whoever emerges the winner here this weekend is a very possibly a strong candidate to go on and do a, a similar thing at the World Championships because this is a the pan is usually something of a preview for the the World Championships in many ways. It's generally the majority of the competitors that you would see at the World Championships, maybe with the exception of one or two, but it's a very good test to see where these guys are at in, in midway through the season. Absolutely, it's like a, it's like a giant teaser. And, and, and what's funny is while it does get us really excited about the World Championship, this is the second, arguably the second biggest tournament in the entire world. Absolutely. Yeah, in terms of the four IBJJF majors, those are the World Championships, Pan Championships, European Championships, and the Brazilian National Championships. Pan's ranks the second only to the Worlds in terms of importance, in terms of prestige. So... Winning pans is a, a major accolade on anybody's resume and a, something that all competitive black belts aspire to do. I love the use of this power crossface, taking the lapel from out of your opponent's waist and wrapping it up and around the armpits. It puts so much extra horsepower behind that crossface and Yago George used that pressure to briefly move into the mount. Wasn't able to stabilize the position long enough to get the points. Penny was able to recover. 
Well, I say recover. George dropped back off into side control, but he didn't concede the four points for that mount, so. Well, now he's got this, he's got the, as you called it, I love the name of that power cross face, and he's got his left arm underhook underneath the lower back of Penny as well. He's not going anywhere from that position. And it's going to be very hard to move. He's stifling, stifling the movement going away from him with the underhook and towards him with the cross face. Now, I feel like Yago George actually allowed his opponent some space there. It looks like he postured up on purpose. Into now this 50-50 with a nine-point lead. Yago George could not be in more control, but is it a smart move strategically to allow your opponent to come back into the game, let's say, at this point in the match? I wonder if he willingly gave it the 50-50 because he knew that I'm up by nine points. I've been playing the 50-50 game for a while. I'm pretty comfortable here. Maybe I just coast this match and stay warm. About three minutes to go left in this one. I think one of the keys for Penny to get back into the match, of course, he has to be very careful of the situations that presented him before, right? When he was in an open guard situation, Iago did a great job of getting tight. 50-50 is a good space to be in uh, when the match is And we're back. So, he, has, he had a grip over the sleeve for a second, and I like that. I think that having a grip over that sleeve to prevent Iago from further locking him down in that, in this 50-50, it's going to be important. But right now, it looks like Iago is looking for possible calf slicer to the back or oh big toehold attack right here that will be enough to earn an advantage that was a tight toehold attack and that's what penny needs to do to get back in the game right now he needs to pick up the intensity keep on going for attacks like that potentially put iago in a place that could open up a submission of some sort Now look at Iago with that with that right hand sleeve grip. It's very, it's very controlling, and Penny's even trying to put another hand on it to break that grip away. Two minutes left. And now a both a, a double lasso for Iago George. It's gonna be very difficult to escape this position. Both of your arms and your shoulders are compromised. Granted, not a lot of submissions or sweeps available from this position for Iago George. He's going to have to let go of one of his lasso uh, grips, one of his sleeve grips, in order to in order to get some offense going out of this position. And I see him there earning, earning. This is not the right word, but being given a penalty because of inactivity. But at this at this point in the match. And the referee takes back that penalty. But at this point in the match, he has no responsibility to open up. Stephen Penny stepping on the grip there. And now this is where he needs to go. With 45 seconds left, Penny pulls guard, immediately tries to spin under for a bit and bolo. But in the process of doing so, immediately once again, Iago George brings his head really close. And this is just a, it's a stifling sort of pressure that ends up putting him in an Omoplata off the back end. This Omoplata submission doesn't typically end up in a tap, but 15 seconds left to see if Iago wants to just hold on. And as the clock winds down, Looks like it will be Iago George moving on. Very solid performance there from George. It really is one of the best light featherweights. Iago George. You can probably see it there in the background of the next match. Undergumbo slapping the mess out of uh, Lucas Pinheiro there.